You're listening to the Stephen or Else podcast, and this is my new intro. Welcome to the Stephen or Else podcast. And yes, that was my new intro. I do that from time to time. It's, you know, it's what I do. So, Because, you know, to me, podcasting is all about experimentation. All right, that's not true. To me, podcasting is really an excuse for me to talk about all the stuff that I love to talk about uh, because I don't have a lot of people to talk about it with in my normal daily life. But I also do like to experiment just a bit, just now and again. And luckily, I have this other podcast called My Other Podcast, uh, in which I get to play around a bit. And uh, this intro is actually one that I use over there, the intro music. And I kind of like it. I mean, I like it a lot more than what I've been using over here, so I just thought I'd bring it on over. I mean, it's got this little pop to it that I really enjoy. I think it. I think it's nice and short and tight, and that's why I've brought it over. Uh, now, does that mean that I'm going to change my intro to My Other Podcast? Maybe, probably, I don't know, we'll see. I have some ideas We'll see. I don't know. Okay, so I have another great show for you this week. Uh, but then, don't I always? Isn't that why you tune in each and every week? This week, uh, this week I just have two things on the plate, but they're both amazing things. I'm going to talk about Lumberjanes Volume 1, and then we're going to have a new edition of the Nerd Quest. And I know y'all look forward to that each and every month. A time for me and my daughters to get together and then go buy nerd stuff. It's usually them buying the nerd stuff. It's just me coming along for the ride. But before we get into all that, I have a new patron over at the Patreon. They go by the name Pollyanna Must Die. Scary. I don't know what that's all about, but it's scary. But hey, thanks for coming on board, Pollyanna Must Die. Uh, Like the others that have come before you, you now have exclusive access to my other podcast, which releases twice a week and is a show about, you know, whatever seeps into my head just moments before I hit record. And speaking of Patreon, I added a new tier, if anybody's interested. I call it the pie in the sky tier, and I call it that because it's $10 a month. And what do you get for that $10 a month? Well, not only do you have access to my other podcast... You also get a chance to win a stack of mediocre comics. Let me explain. So over on my other podcast, one thing I had started doing is, is, is a little thing I call single issue episodes. I have this box of comics in my mudroom. And uh, it was a box of, comic, uh, box of comics that my pa brought over one day. And he said, hey, boy, this stuff's been up in my storage spot and I want it out. I ain't got no room for other stuff. You take these comics from me, boy, and you take them now. And I said, yes, Father, I will do this. I will take these comic books from you, and I will place them in my mudroom. And they were just a collection of just random books. And one morning when I was taking the dog out into the backyard, I stopped, and I just reached into that box, and I pulled out a comic. And then I thought to myself, I will read this comic, and I will talk about it over on my other podcast. Yes, That is what I shall do. And as I started going through this box, I realized that while some of them would be fun to read and talk about, I don't really want them in the house anymore. And then I thought about all the comic books that are up in my attic and how much I don't want most of those in my house anymore. And I really don't want to go through the trouble of trying to sell, you know, trying to sell them because honestly, most of them aren't really worth much. And so that's what you're going to have access to. My throwaways, the comics that I no longer want, just random books that I will give to you. And this is how it's going to work. If you are part of the pie in the sky $10 tier starting this month in December, then in January at the beginning of the month at the, on the first episode of the Stephen R. Else podcast in January, I will take the names of everyone that is in the pie in the sky tier and I will draw one name out and that person shall win a stack of comics. And actually, let's make this uh, let's make this more interesting. Anybody that signs up for the ten dollar tier in in December, I will send you some comics. How's that? Are they are they going to be are they going to be comics that are going to be worth much? Probably not. Are they all going to be in great shape? Probably not. 
like I said, these are my castaways. But you know, one's, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You know what I'm saying? Some of these issues may be really fun to own and may be uh, that random issue that you need to fill a hole in your collection. I don't know, but that's what you're going to get for $10. So anyone who signs up for the $10 tier in the month of December will get at least two comic books from me. Maybe four, maybe five. Depends on how many of you sign up. And then after that, starting then in the first episode of the Stephen or Else podcast in February, I will draw a name from those folks who are still in the $10 tier. And I'll send them some comics. There will be at least four each month. If I don't read four issues for my other podcast, you're still going to get at least four issues, maybe more. It just depends on what I've got sitting around and, and, and what I want to throw into a box and send. Okay, sound good? Is that what you want to do? That's what I want you to do. Let's get it done. Okay, so with all that out of the way, uh, how about we just go ahead and start talking uh, about some Lumberjanes? What do you say? What is your favorite thing in the world? Comics. Yes. <laughs> Comics! No, 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 wait, tell me about comics. Comics! This is Lumberjanes Volume 1, Beware the Kitten Holy. This is from Boom Studios. It's actually an imprint of Boom Studios called Boombox, and it was written by Noel Stevenson and Grace Ellis. Illustrated by Brooke Allen, colors by Marta Laiho. I'm not. I, I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm really bad with names. And the letterers were by Aubrey. Again, A C A Z. I don't know. A I E S E. I apologize for breaking in here like this. I don't like to interrupt the show when I can, but I neglected to say as I recorded this bit that there will be spoilers aplenty. So if you have not read Lumberjanes Volume 1, Beware the Kitten Holy, just know that I will be spoiling it. There's not a lot to spoil. There's not any big secrets that you're gonna, that's going to spoil the, your, the rest of the series for you, honestly, I don't think. But I do talk about it in detail, so just keep that in mind. So the Lumberjanes is about a small group of girls, Mal, Ripley, Molly, April, and Joe, as they attend, and I'm really, it's, I'm really going to have a hard time with this freaking name too. Miss Quinzella Thisquin Peniquiquil, Peniquiquil Thistle Crumpets Camp for Hardcore Lady Types. I really meant to practice this beforehand. Miss Quinzella Thisquin Peniquiquil Thistle Crumpet, Thistle, <laughs> one more time. Miss Quinzella Thisquin Peniquiquil Thistle Crumpets Camp for Hardcore Lady Types. This is a summer camp whose attendees are known as Lumberjane Scouts. So we begin with the character of April, one of our Lumberjane Scouts, and she's in the wood at no- in the woods. It's nighttime. She's looking a bit like Little Red Riding Hood because she's got a cloak on with a red hood. And there is terror in the air. She hears a noise, a snap. She drops her flashlight. Another noise comes out of the dark, a rustle, and she directs the beam of her light in the direction of the noise and finds two other girls, Mal and Molly. And they all three scream. What in the Joan Jett are you doing? April exclaims. Joan Jett, for those who may not know, is an original member of The Runaways and is most famous for her 80s hit with the Blackhearts, I love rock and roll. Now, this is the first in a running shout out throughout the book to strong female icons. And to my shame, uh, Joan Jett was the only one that I actually recognized. Uh, but I started to look up the others. So we have others. others. Uh, some of the others that are mentioned in the book, uh, Bessie Coleman. She's the first woman of African-American descent and the first of Native American descent to hold a pilot license, and made Jemison the first African American woman to travel in space. So there's all these ex- exclamations every once in a while in the book, uh, very similar to, what in the Joan Jett are you doing? So 
Joe, at this point, the character Joe steps out of the shadows and she admonishes the other three for the noise, saying, this is, this, this is a stealth mission, you dweebs. But then suddenly from all around them comes the sound of howling. The four girls strike action poses, and out of the dark, they find themselves looking at glowing yellow eyes, three per shadowy creature. They're foxes, very large, three-eyed foxes, and they surround the girls. One of the foxes attacks Molly, uh, leaping at her with, with just teeth bared, mouth open, and she shoves a stick in the thing's mouth to hold it back, and she's fighting with it, and she's kicking it as she's fighting with it, and the, basically all the strength just goes out of the fox, and it just lays there, and we're left with a lull, a silent moment, when our fifth heroine jumps in from the dark. So this is Ripley. All five of our girls are together now. Ripley swings in. She lands on a fox and just like violently, bam, lands on this fox. And the fox just like disappears in a puff of smoke. And a small like circle of gold, like, a, like some kind of medallion, falls from where the, the, wolf, the, the fox stood. Like, like maybe it was one of the, the fox's eyes. I don't know. Uh, but then rather than attacking, they still have all these foxes around them. And they... But instead of attacking the remaining foxes, they howl and they shoot beams of light from their eyes, which forms words in the night sky. And those words say, beware the kitten holy. The foxes then leave and the girls are then standing alone in the dark woods confused. So they decide to go back to camp before Jen, their camp counselor, wakes up. But as they're leaving, Joe finds that circle of gold and puts it in her pack. Uh, this does not uh, come up in the rest of the, the volume. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned, maybe I did, but this volume collects the first four issues. So they arrive back at the cabin and they find that Jen is awake and she's, she's quite upset. They have broken many camp rules and she takes them to go see Rosie, the camp counselor. And the girls explain to Rosie that they saw a bear woman and Rosie's like, whoa, that piques her interest. And so she kind of, she kind of bundles Jen out of the room. Tell her, could you go get us some hot chocolate? And, and you know, and I'm going to talk to these girls. Uh, so she asks the girls to elaborate. And they tell Rosie that an old woman was prowling about out in the dark. And as they watched her from the cabin, she turned into a bear. So they all went after her. And that's when they encountered the foxes. Molly, in the meantime, is worried that Rosie is going to call their parents. She doesn't. But instead, she asks them to recite the Lumberjanes Pledge. And then when they're done, she explains to them that they're going to see some stuff this summer. She says, stuff you might not understand. It'll be hard, but you're scouts and you're made of tougher stuff. So remember that pledge you took and stick together no matter what. So the next day, Jen takes them out on, a, on, on the river in some canoes where they're attacked by a river monster. Uh, Mal, I believe it was, was very worried about going out into the river uh, fearful of river monsters because apparently she's a big fan of watching the show River Monsters on the Discovery Channel. And, and yeah, guess what? They're, they're attacked by a river monster. It's like some big sea serpent looking thing um, with three eyes. And they escape because April takes out one of her hair scrunchies and fires it into one of the monster's eyes like a rubber band. And it's like, yip! And it, and it disappears. But they're not out of danger yet. They're separated from Jen and they're lost in the woods. And at one point, uh, Ripley pulls out a candy bar to eat and an eagle with three eyes swoops down, snatches the candy bar from her hand and flies away. And Ripley chases after it and climbs up a tree where the, the eagle is sitting at the very top of the tree. And April or uh, Ripley climbs up to the top of the tree, but the eagle escapes. Ripley doesn't get her candy, candy bar back. But she does see out by the lake a lighthouse, a tower. On her way down from the tree, she falls and she triggers a trap door in the ground that uncovers a secret entrance to a cave. But it's not really a cave. It's more like a slide. And Ripley, she's kind of the impetuous one. She immediately enters and falls down the slide. The others follow them, follow her. They find themselves in a room surrounded by statues that look like Greek gods and monsters. But they can't go back up because the slide's too steep. Uh, and instead, they find a door. And it's guarded by one of the statues. And so as they approach the door, the statue comes to life and says that no one can pass without first besting him in a feat of strength. And this, 
this uh, this statue kind of looks, it makes me think of Hercules. That's who I'm assuming it is. And he flexes a couple times. He goes into some weightlifters poses. Um, but basically what he wants is he wants one of these little girls to arm wrestle him. And he's this big muscly statue, and these are little girls. But April volunteers, saying that she's a champion arm wrestler. And guess what? She beats him, and she actually tears his arm off. And she tells him, remember, it all comes down to leverage. And so the door behind him opens up into a tunnel, and they go into the tunnel, and immediately they're set upon by booby traps. And arrows fly at them, and they run from the arrows. They don't get hurt, but they run right into another statue this one also is alive, and it's got the head of a bird, and it's wielding a great scythe, and it's trying to kill them. And the bird head statue, it's got this glowing crystal in its chest, and Mal realizes that the, the crystal in its chest matches a hole in the door that's, that's beyond this chamber where, where they need to go. And so she, so she yells out to Ripley, and she says, Fastball special, which, you know, I have to assume is a shout out to the X-Men because the only other thing I've ever seen a fastball special in is the X-Men comics. And that's when Colossus would pick up Wolverine and throw him at somebody. And that's pretty much what Mal does. Ripley curls up into a ball and Mal throws her at the statue and Ripley kicks the statue in the face and knocks it out. So then Mal takes the crystal up, puts it in the door and it opens. So they escape. They continue through this underground tunnel. They encounter other booby traps and other puzzles that they have to solve. It's, re it's quite the Indiana Jones type thing. Uh, so they have to go through, you know, booby traps and these puzzles to get through the, the, the tunnel until they find themselves in another room. And this has mysterious script all over the walls. Everything is written in English, but the phrases don't make sense. Um, and it's as they're looking at them that Molly realizes that the reason they don't make sense is because they're anagrams. And once she realizes that they're anagrams, she remembers the message that they were given by the fox, which April had had written down in her diary. So they take the diary out, beware the holy kitten, or beware the kitten holy, and she unscrambles a message to read in the tower by the lake. And that's when Ripley tells them that she saw the tower by the lake. It was the lighthouse that she saw from the the tree. And so they all agree that they need to go check it out. But first they have to get out of this underground layer. There's another anagram on the wall that says pee on seams. And Ripley takes that literally and thinks that they have to pee on something to get out. But again, Molly unscrambles it and says aloud open sesame. And that's when a, like a doorway, a portal, a hole in the ceiling opens up. It's a circular hole. It opens up and a ladder falls out and they're able to climb out of it and escape. You're getting at camp That's April, Mal, and Molly, and Ripley, and Joe They stick close together wherever they go That's a lumberjanes too And the scouting lads don't This is how we're gonna spend summers away from home From camping and canoeing to stories By the fireside Running through the woods under the starlight Solving every mystery they come across Bear women and river monsters That's the motto and you know they're epic constant Go ask Jen and Jan I like that we can stay up And if it's in the plan for summer mysteries Hand across the chest, take a deep breath forever then Let's say it all together then Yeah, that's all of us where to do my best every day And in all that I do to be strong and brave To be truthful and compassionate Interesting and interested to respect nature Pay attention and question the world around me To think of others first To always help and protect my friends And there's a line of God or whatever And to make the world a better place That's the way we do it here in the lumber days. You can be that outdoors type With a raccoon hat on your head Or others might think you're a pretty princess Or a punk rock kid who never quite fit in That don't matter Cause your friends They know how it is Like it's hard enough To grow up a nerdy kid And it's harder in this world Full of misogynists If the adults don't stop you Then some other dude might Wonder how they handle That monster under moonlight This is hardcore lady types only She and her homies Come to Quinzilla Fist Squin And hear some stories 
It might be scary, but it's always worth it. Send your daughters to your parents and do a service. Yeah. And after this one, I wanna split my time in the mall between the lumberjanes and gravity falls. Solving mysteries with monsters and my friends there. Yeah. So sing along if you know the fanfare. And I solemnly swear to do my best every day. And in all that I do to be strong and brave, to be truthful and compassionate, interesting and interested, to respect nature, and pay attention and question the world around me, to think of others first, to always help and protect my friends. And there's a line of God or whatever, and to make the world a better place. That's the way we do it here in the lumber day. And I solemnly swear to do my best every day. Cause I'm a lumber Jane. And I solemnly swear to do my best every day. Cause I'm a lumber Jane. And I solemnly swear to do my best every day. Cause I'm a lumber Jane. Yeah. The next day, the girls are out on a hike with Jen, and they encounter a Yeti. They run, and, and, and you know, the Yeti screams, they scream, and then the Yeti roars at them, and they run. They're running from the Yeti. Jen's not with them, because they've gone off. They're, they're trying to leave Jen behind so they can go check out this tower. But they run into this Yeti. The Yeti screams at him. He has what appears to be a heart tattoo on his, on his chest. And uh, so they run and they run into to Jen and they roll down a hill and they all land in Poison Ivy. And that's when a group of boys dressed in scout uniforms uh, come upon them and they offer their assistance. And they take them back to their camp, the Mr. Theodore Tarquin Reginald Lancelot Herman Crumpets camp for boys. But as they're, as they're on their way, April, uh, she feels like there's something not quite right there. And she's telling Joe about it. She says, it's quite the coincidence, isn't it? That we are in trouble and suddenly these boys are there and they're able to help us out. And Joe doesn't quite buy it, but Joe trusts her friend. And that's a big theme in this book is friendship and trusting in your friends. So back at the camp, the boys help. Uh, they give the, the girls like a ointment or whatever to put on their rashes. And the boys serve them tea and cookies but then their camp counselor barges in and he's like a real man's man and he's got an eye patch and a mustache and he's holding an ax and he's angry. He comes in and he's, I thought I smelled tea and, and he sees that their girls are there and he's like, girls. And, and he's really upset because the boys are serving these girls tea and cookies and he tells them, cookies are for the weak. Men should be splitting wood and smoking pipes. Then he just leaves he leaves to, as he says, catch a fish by wrestling it from a bear. And so that's the that's the, their camp counselor. Um, and then the boys, uh, they help the girls out by distracting Jen so the girls can sneak out to go check out the tower. Uh, and when they find it, it's being guarded by three Yeti. And one of the three is the one that they encountered before. And that particular one is telling the other Yeti, I'm telling you, humans are so gross. They almost touched me. And one of the other Yeti is like, ugh. And that first Yeti is like, this job is bogus. These Yeti are just awesome. I love them so much. And one of the other Yetis say, hey, Janice, give me a turn with the Walkman. Because one of the Yetis is listening to a Walkman. The Yeti were probably one of my favorite parts of this book. And they're not even in it that much. And so the girls show up and they offer uh, one of the girls. I don't remember which one now. I think it was, I think it was Mal could have been Ripley, took a bunch of the cookies from the boys' camp, and so they offer some to the Yeti if the Yeti will let them into the tower. And, of course, the Yeti are like, yeah, great, man, cookies. This is awesome. And so they go into the lighthouse. They go all the way up to the top, and in where, I guess, I don't know if you call it a bulb, whatever it is that they, you know, the big the thing that makes the light in the, in the lighthouse, in its place is a bow and a quiver of arrows. And Molly reaches out and takes it. And Joe tells her, you should keep it. You're the only one who's earned your Robin Hood badge. And I thought that was a nice, I thought that was a nice moment. You know, it's kind of a small moment, but it's all these, these five girls, they're in this tower. There's a, a bow with a quiver of arrows and it's glowing. It doesn't glow once Molly takes it, but it's glowing. And they don't fight over who's going to get it. They just all agree that Molly should be the one to take it because she has earned her Robin Hood badge. So we go back to the boys camp and Jen is alone with the scouts and suddenly a change comes over them and they turn into like these frothing monster boys and they attack her. And she escapes into the woods 
and runs into the girls as they're coming back from the tower. And then the monster boys start chasing them through the woods and they they escape by crossing uh, like one of these rip, rickety wooden rope bridges that are, go over this gorge. They get to the other side before the boys get to the bridge and Molly fires one of the arrows and it slices through one of the one of the ropes on the other side and knocks the bridge out and they can't they can't cross it. And uh, so the girls are allowed to escape and then the book ends with a shadowy figure and we're going to assume at this point that it's the camp counselor from the boys camp uh, and I but I think that's what the writers want us to assume. If it was the camp counselor, why would they why would they go through the trouble of of making him just a silhouette, right? And it's a, the silhouette obviously looks just like the camp counselor's silhouette, but, you know, it, it, I don't know. I think they're trying to make us think it's the camp counselor, but it's not. We're going to find out it's somebody else. But he's telling the boys that they have failed him, and the boys are still frothing at the mouth, and they're, they're these monster boys. And he says, but not to worry, uh, because next time they will be prepared. And that's the book. That was uh, Lumberjanes, Volume 1, Beware the Kitten Holy. And I I really liked it. I, I absolutely loved it. I think uh, I think it's it's just going to get more and more fun. It was a very fun book. It was very funny. It was clever. It had a, I think, so far it has a really good message. It's all about friends and, and uh, helping each other out. Um, and in the meantime, you get into a lot of adventures. These girls are just getting into some crazy, crazy adventures. And apparently it was only meant to be, I think, an eight-issue mini is what I read. But it, it's it been so popular that they've that they've gone further with it. And I know Rana has read it. I think Palin has read it as well. Rana really likes it. She's read at least the first two trades, possibly the first three. I don't know exactly what's out there. But Rana has really enjoyed it. And her favorite one is Joe. I don't know who my favorite one is so far in this just these first four issues. I, I There are things to like about all of them. Um, April is kind of the, uh, she's kind of the princess. Uh, Ripley is the, would be the tomboy who's always getting into trouble and she's the one that jumps in first. Um, Mal is, she's kind of a, she looks like kind of an emo punk rocker type girl. Um, I don't know. I think, I don't know. It's for me, it's a toss between Mal and Ripley. Molly seems pretty cool. She wears a coon, coon skin cap all the time. And then Rana's favorite, as I said, is Joe. She's really tall, um, and she seems to be uh, somewhat serious. She's the serious one. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely keep reading this series, going on further as they as I can get them. I got this one off of my Hoopla app, and I sat down last night and I you know I said you know what, I've had a couple of books that I can talk about for this episode. But knowing that I was going to record this episode today, I just didn't feel like talking about any of these other books. And uh, we had done the Nerd Quest earlier in the week, which you'll listen to later. And Rana has me- mentioned a couple times in the Nerd Quest that she wanted to start trying to collect the single issues of Lumberjanes. And I think when we were there, she I think she mentions it in the episode that they were up to episode or episode uh, issue number 54. So there's quite a number of them out there still to read. Uh, and so I just I just went on to my Hoopla app and I found that they had volume one. And I said, I'm just going to read this. It's only four issues. I can read that tonight. And I did. Collected my thoughts. And now we're talking about it here. Hey, hey, isn't that fun? And now the Stephen or Else podcast proudly presents... on a journey to self-discovery. A tale as old as time itself. You know what time it is. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, for this is Nerd Quest. All right, so we're now coming upon the Orchard Corners shopping area where we will pull up into the parking space for Chops Comics, located next to the Jazzercise. Yay! Oh. Slugbug! Slugbug! Ah. Have you told the people on your podcast I, about I, I believe I've tried to, to talk about Fla- Slugbug, the Slugbug Contest. 
Basically, that means unless I can find a slug bug, Palin gets to hit me. At any time. At any time. Usually when he completely forgets. Yeah, and she usually is really good about waiting until I've completely forgotten about it. And then she just hits me. Yeah, the other day she and it, hit. Well, it's... It, the, the pain is twofold when she does that. Because one, it hurts, right? Physically, there's physical pain. But there's also mental pain as I'm trying to figure out why my daughter, the little girl that I love, just punched me violently for no reason. <laughs> yeah, yesterday she punched and I was like, whoa! But then I remembered, oh wait, yeah, it's slap bet. Slug bug, slug bug, slap bet. All right, so I'm going to turn the gain down on this a bit because if the gain is too high, then it maxes out and all that stuff. So let's let's go on into Chops Comics and see if we can find that bundled Steven Universe book. There's some people over at the Jazzercise. They're really jazzing it up. There's snow falling from the sky. Look at this. I like the Wonder Woman, and they got the Dark Knight Returns. Okay, in we go. Hey, how you doing? How do? Doing all right. I was here last month. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. I started listening to the podcast. Are you ever on the podcast? Uh, possibly once I'm not in school. So yeah. Maybe over winter break. And your name is? Kevin. And Kevin. I'm Steven. Steven, Steven that's yeah. right. Is it there? Oh, she, there was a bundled, that bundled Steven Universe that she, oh, yeah. she saw last time, and we were hoping it would still be here. Yeah, absolutely. She didn't have the money last time. Did you find what you wanted, Noodle? Yes, I found Fortnite. Oh, my God. Oh, Fortnite. <laughs> Great. No. Cool Eevee shirt, by the way. What? The Your Eevee shirt? Oh, right oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been playing the Let's Go Pikachu. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Uh, wow. Yellow was the first Pokemon game I ever played, so it's fun seeing a remake of my original game. Oh, look, they got the golden books. Oh, what? It's this Harry oh. Potter. They got the superhero golden books. That's awesome. I didn't know those were a thing. Man, I knew. Whoa! They made the superhero ones. This this is uh, one of the first series I bought for myself when I was a kid. Kitty Pride versus Wolverine. So so is this are True Believers number one? What's the story behind that? So the True Believers stuff are reprints of mm, stories that they think people should be reading or you know were kind of typical titles at the time. Yeah. So. It's, You'll also see a lot of, like, you know, with the Venom movie that was coming out, there were a ton of True Believers in Venom comics. Oh, I bet. As well. I bet. Not that I'm complaining too much, because I wanted to read them anyways, but that's basically what it is. It's it's just reprints of, you know, harder-to-find comics. Older comics are ones that are coinciding with the movie. Or so they do, like, they had the, the Kitty Pride and Wolverine, are they doing all... However many issues that was, or they're just no, doing the number one. No, it's usually just issue one. <laughs> well, that's pretty lame. <laughs> um, that's, that's pretty much what they all are, just number ones. Or in this uh, case of the what if comics, it's you know just whatever. Yeah. It's, since it's you know different every time. Yeah, the one ifs are pretty much one shots. Yeah, exactly. But that that one, I, I'm assuming, then they're going to go. Okay, did you enjoy this story? Go find them. Yeah. That's go, exactly, go find that's exactly the rest. What it is. It's like if you like number one, find a trade or good luck. So hope you have a lot of money. What you got there? This Atomic Empire, yes. yeah. yeah. It looks interesting, I but I don't know how much it is. Well, they're usually right on the back. It is twenty four ninety nine. Nope. Yeah. I only have eleven dollars. Like, saw the Hedgehog comics. The hardcover yeah, comic is usually pretty expensive. But it looks cool. Well, yeah. do you want to see if there's any single issues you might want to pick up? I want to start buying the Lumberjanes comics. That does look good. Yeah. But like, they only they have like. Number fifty six, and I'm like, oof! I don't have, I can't just start reading Lumberjanes at number fifty six. So I need to buy them online. <laughs> but I still need to finish collecting them. Sick well, let's see if we can find something that Palin might like. There's some Lumberjanes down there. Got Spider Girls. Spider Girls. So Spider Girls is a mini series that they're doing, and it's only going to be three issues long, um, and it ties in with the spider geddon storyline that's going on but honestly if you read the like the very first like the inside of the cover it kind of gives you a quick synopsis of what's happening 
Well, let's see. You didn't want the Spider Girls? I mean, I might. I don't you can get exactly. issue one of Kitty Pride and Wolverine. What's Kitty Pride and Wolverine? That, was, that was one of the first series I bought when I was a kid. Kitty of course, you're only going to get issue number one. If you like it, though, I've got all six issues up in the attic somewhere. <laughs> Kitty Pride, I don't even know. Get Kitty Pride can phase through walls. Let's yeah, go, Kitty Pride. Pride. That's her name, well, Catherine Pride. Crystal. Is it Catherine? Um, well, um, didn't she go by Shadow Cat? Was yeah. her superhero name? Yeah. And then they just kind of dropped it. Mind. Right. Like Kitty Pride. Yep. Which honestly, I kind of like both names. Yeah. I like this art. Here you go, Pay. Eight bucks. Franklin Richards. Fantastic four year. Hmm? Franklin Richards. He's he's the Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman's kid. I don't know who that is. That is. I just don't <laughs> I know, I don't know who those peeps are. You know the Fantastic Four. Oh, like... The, the, the stretchy guy yeah. and the invisible woman. Yeah. It's <laughs> a great way to describe it. There's also the... Here, let me the just slide in there. Mm. And the dark flaming crystal. guy. The dark horse crystals. Well, I'm going to see if they have number one. Yeah, no, I looked there. They, already, they don't no, have number, number one. one. Jetsons, the Incredibles. Garfield. Can I just say that I freaking loved the second Incredibles movie. This obviously is not working very well. I mean, Spider Girl sounds cool, but I think I'm just gonna get confused. Well, you know, you don't have to buy something just because you have money. No. But it's burning a hole in her pocket. I know. Ooh. It's the restaurant at the end of the universe. I'm just looking at 20 bucks. Dude. Over the Garden Wall comic for eight dollars, but I already have like one of the like. Oh eggs. man! So I can't just like get those right now. I could get them though. Yeah, but I don't want these. <laughs> nope, I'm getting these. Really? I like yeah. I like how you do you guys do these bundles. I think that's really neat. Look, it's uh, Over the Garden yeah, Wall. I'm a big fan of it as well. I uh, mean. I well. want it. These are probably myself. just yeah. like one of the books I have, though. Yeah, and then I have three others, and these will be mine. It's over the garden wall, four of them, and it's eight dollars. Okay, cool, good idea. I want to get that. Ron doesn't want me to get because those. Why does she can just one? read them because I have like this is probably like one of the books I have. Well, but she'll have the single issues, so it's. <laughs> I understand. I get it. I really it. want the single issues of Wonder Jane's, but they don't have one, so I have to buy them online. Yeah, I don't have to have. Oh, well, look. They have the whole Kitty Pride and Wolverine series here. That's 30, 30 bucks. bucks. Yeah, but still. Mm, worth it. But I mean, like, I, mm. I still have to finish buying the six ways. Is this called Furry? Fury. Fury. Oh, I thought it said Furry. Fury. Fury is two R's. Mm. Girl. No, it's too violent for you, hon. It's a bear. My friends keep telling me bear to on watch it. Attack on Titan, which is this really it's, gory anime. Yeah, it's supposed like, to be. No, I don't want to watch violent. that. I only watch. I've heard of that. Cute anime. All right, you guys ready to go? I only watch the. Yeah. All right, head up stuff. front. Yeah. He'll ring you out. Uh, yeah. I apologize again for another interruption, but at this point in the recording, I had begun to have some troubles with the app that I was using. Uh, turns out I wasn't actually having any troubles at all. It was all in my head. But regardless, at the time, to be on the safe side, I had stopped recording and switched back to the voice recorder app, which I don't enjoy very much. Uh, but just to be safe, I switched back to it because I know that in general it works. Now, I only mention it because there's an obvious drop in quality, which frankly isn't so obvious when you stick this here apology between the one recording the other. But when they're back to back, you can you can notice it. So so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, so I'm going to take you back now to the conclusion of Nerd Quest. Thank you. Wow, 150 dollars for the complete Secret Wars set, huh? Mm. I'm currently paying off issue eight because I I found it for 80 bucks here, and I, it's kind of the the one comic that like I could reasonably afford and really want because I've got. Uh, issue uh, Amazing Spider-Man 252, so first appearance of the symbiote. Yeah. Scene. And that storyline that I wanted the first appearance, period. I'm going to have to get up in my attic because I have all those and I have all the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, really? I don't know what kind of shape they're in at That's this point, though. That's a lot of crises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, you ready to go? By the way, if you want the Marvel previews, it's free. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's have a Marvel's pre Marvel preview. If you want to take two, it doesn't matter to me.
They're great. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks, thanks again. We'll good probably one. see you next month. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be here. All right. So I ended up switching over to my voice recorder mic because I don't know. I don't. I'm just. I don't trust this new app just quite yet. I don't trust any of these freaking apps anymore. You did not unlock. So are we all happy on our nerd quest? Yes. Yeah. Rana got her um, Steven Universe. Steven Steven Universe. So I need to give you five dollars. Yeah, you do. Okay. Because um, a very kind listener, yeah. after listening to the episode with Nerd Quest last month, uh, I don't know if I want to say his name. I, you, you never know when people donate money if they necessarily want their name mentioned. So I always get nervous when it comes to that. So I don't know if I should say his name or not. But he's a long-time listener. But he donated $5. So Palin could get that unicorn. It's beautiful. I love it. she bought and she loves. And donated $5 toward that Steven Universe set. So we'll just say thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. You're the best. I said your name, John. Yeah. I'll email you first. And if it's you don't want me to say it, You'll I'll take it. it out. You'll censor it. I'll censor it. I'll change it into thank you, hidden figure. We need to we need to say thank you again, anonymous. Thank you, say. anonymous. <laughs> I'll put in a robot voice in there. Okay, okay so that was Nerd Quest. Um, the girls got bought some books. I was uh, able to get a free copy of the Marvel previews, which is just free. So this will be a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to go, ooh, ah, I can't afford it. It was really neat seeing a lot of those old books in there that I own, knowing that uh, if my set of Secret Wars issues and my set of Crisis on Infinite Earths issues are in decent shape, I might be able to sell them both and get a couple hundred bucks. Do that online, I suppose. But okay, so yeah, folks, if you're ever in Lawrence, Kansas... Just take a castle in between um, Ninth. Well, actually, they're not numbered anymore. I think it's Yale, Harvard, and uh, Bob Billings Parkway. Just right off of uh, Castle and Bob Billings Park. Bob, Bob. Man, I can't freaking so talk. So, streets named after colleges now? Yeah, yeah, Harvard. That's what the street is. So it's between Harvard and Bob's Billings. Bob Billings Parkway. Good lord, I can't talk. Don't say the crazy name in me. Yeah, just on the corner of Castle and Bob Billings Parkway, which is also known as 15th Street. Chops Comics, right next to the Jazzercise. So if you see some folks in there, ow, dang, see, she hit me. Ow. Why, I thought, am I doing something wrong? Is there a spider on my shoulder? Dang, that one's sticking around, too. That hurts. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> All right, well, let's go home. I'll have plenty of time to sit and chill before I got to turn around and go back to work. Everybody say bye. 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 So, yeah, Rana got her Steven Universe bundle. Uh, I mentioned the bundles a couple times in that segment, um, and I'm not sure what other stores do around the country or in the world, but, uh, it's this chops comics. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it done in any of the local stores. Uh, but chops comics will bundle single issues of a run like, uh, well, like Kitty Pride and Wolverine, which was a, a six issue mini, which ran from 1984 to 1985. They bundled those six issues together. So basically they just took all six issues, bagged and boarded them and then put them in a bigger bag and they sold it for 30 bucks. And I thought that, I think that's really neat. They had a lot of those bundles all around the store of different runs. And so, uh, also gave me some ideas of stuff that I might have in the attic that I could sell. But hey, thank you for listening to the Stephen or Else podcast. I would love to know what you think. You can tell me what you think in a couple of different ways. You can email your questions and comments to Stephen or Else at gmail.com, or you can just leave a comment over at the episode website itself, the main episode website, which is stephenorels.com. 
And hey, if you feel inclined to throw a little support my way, you can do that in two different ways. You can become my patron over at Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you not only get the warm and fuzzy feeling that you're helping me provide for my family, you also get instant access to my other podcast, which is called My Other Podcast. And it releases twice a week and is exclusive to patrons only. You can check that out over at patreon.com slash Stephen R. Orr. And if you aren't into the commitment of a monthly payment thing, you can throw me a one-time payment as little as $3 over at coffee.com. That's ko-fi.com slash Stephen R. Orr. The theme song for this episode is Worship by Trinity X. Find it and more songs from the band at atomiczombierecords.bandcamp.com. The song played during the Lumberjanes segment is Lumberjanes by Adam Warrock. Find it and more music by Adam Warrock at youtube.com slash user slash a Warrock mixtape. The music played during the Nerd Quest segment comes from George Harab. Look him up at georgeharab.com. And of course, all of those links will be in the show notes. And so that's it, folks. That's my show. I'm your host, Steven. You're you. And you've been great. Talk to you next week. Good job.